temperature can drop way down to minus 150 degrees, and it can actually fluctuate way up as well. But on the Earth, the temperature usually stays between minus 20 and plus 20, and the average, the global average temperature is about 16 degrees. Now, there's a few reasons for that, but you know, can anyone have a stab at guessing why? Um, the ozone layer keeps our medium. That's pretty good. I'm pretty impressed. You know, so it's it's not so much the the ozone layer, but it's the whole Earth's atmosphere. This is when man starts to come onto the scene, and you can see what happens with carbon dioxide concentrations in the atmosphere. They go through the roof, they spike. And that's because we've taken all the coal and all the oil and all the fossil fuels out of the Earth's crust that have been there for millions of years, hundreds of thousands of years. We've taken them out and we've put them in our power stations, we've put them in our cars, we've put them in our, um, you know, the whole, our whole system is so totally dependent on fossil fuels. This is really where the science is at at the moment. What the science is telling us is if we keep polluting at a level like we are at the moment, this is what's going to happen to global temperatures by the end of the century. But they say that um, emissions are going to be reduced by 80% by 2050, so how is it? Different? Well, saying it and doing it are two different things. You know, If we let temperatures to rise to 4 degrees, you know, the, the ice caps might melt, the sea levels might rise. The last time the pl planet was that warm, sea levels were you know, 50 or 60 metres higher than they are now, so there would be no Dublin, for example. And what happens when your econ economy develops very fast? Well, you get money, you get demand. But in this context of this discussion about climate change, what happens? You use more power. We can't close our economy. We can't stop our economies overnight, right? But what we can do is we can try and have a target to keep global temperatures within a certain maximum level. And essentially what the EU wants to do is it wants to cut emissions by 20 to 30%, right, on 1990 levels. I think in your manifesto, what you have to think about is, are we going to talk about external policy? Or are we going to talk about internal policy? Are we going to talk about what the EU needs to do on the global stage to help other countries reduce their emissions? Or are you going to talk about the internal EU policy, what EU needs to do inside its own economy to, to, to reduce its emissions? That's one element of the triangle, that energy now has to be clean. Um, another thing, and your, your, your politicians, is you, know, you want to have cheap energy for uh, householders and people, for businesses, you know, for businesses to be competitive. And that it's, third element is that it's secure, that it's actually there, and that it's not under threat, that we can actually, we can actually uh, use it. At the moment, there's a problem with this issue here, the security of them. Um, the, the, we get gas from Russia, but sometimes that's cut off. You know, it's used by Russia um, as a political weapon. They say, um, you know, in the in the EU. So you have to think about that when you're when you're doing your 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 manifest manifestos later. Renewable energy is clean. It ticks that box. If we build enough wind farms, it'll be we'll have enough of it. And but at the moment, this is the problem. It's not cheap, um, and we need. To, to fund it, and we need to be looking at the EU to that they'll invest in, in renewable energy. Um, now, what would you think Ireland should focus on in terms of you know the problems you know for our future? What should what energy? What renewable? Wind farms and not solar. No, <laughs> no, no, definitely not solar. It should be you know, we're, and that's the way we're going. We're going with wind. So do you have a? Do you, well, that's a, another issue, yeah. Now, it's harder to build. Yeah, and we are, we're trying to do that as well. Um, the, the priority is still with on land because offshore is still, it's very expensive to, to develop them out there um, in terms of building the connectors under the sea. But you're right, it's windier there. And if we had the, the money to, to build them out there, we should be. Um, in like 50 years time, where do you think Ireland would be better or worse than it is? Which better? I reckon we will we'll, we'll do what we're saying, we'll do, we'll develop uh, the wind energy and we will be one of the best in Europe. This year the focus is going to be on energy policy and on climate change and we have three parties from Transition Year here in St Paul's who are going to debate. One aim is actually educate our students, especially students, they should know what they <coughs> renewable resources so that when they grow up they can actually have something to do about it. And that party also is against nuclear power. 
which we think is dangerous. Council likes to have a um, power plant, a nuclear power plant. Council. These images are from Chernobyl and they're pretty gruesome. There are two children who were have deformed because of the nuclear reactors. I wouldn't like anybody to be in a town or a country who has nuclear <coughs> energy. We could also hand out leaflets about the high demand for energy in Ireland and tell them how much easier it would be uh, to have renewable resources rather than rely on um, foreign countries to supply us with gas and oil. Most people believe that climate change does not affect the planet. Let us tell you what does. We require the KCCP, the time, the introduction of nuclear energy to the countries to use it more often. More often like it's like CO2 with like carbon dioxide, which causes for warming to prevent climate change. If we can get rid of global warming by introducing nuclear energy. Because it doesn't because no emissions are burnt and climate is that no global warming can happen. Just remember when climate change is a change forever. Go for a CCP. Thank you. We the green track demand countries spend their money, which they raise from taxes, fines and carbon tax, and use their resources for the good of the environment. I also think the Ireland should build more wind farms. These are very important. Very important. But they do cost a lot of money. I think we can raise funds by gathering all the EU leaders together and getting them to raise taxes, carbon tax, like Glenn said, and then putting it into a big fund. And at the end of the year, we should send money out to countries that need the money to build wind farms. I believe, unlike many people, that nuclear energy is a good thing. Nuclear power creates safety and energy, and it creates a lot of other things too. It creates a lot of jobs. It takes years hundreds of thousands of years for the nuclear radiation to actually die down in the waste. So it's going to be even worse in the long term if we do use nuclear waste. You can't use renewable energy like wind power, solar power or uh, tidal power. That would be better for the environment and it might be there for the, the country to buy but it would do a help a lot to make the earth greener than it actually is. Well, first you can't really pay a higher tax during the recession and plus a quarter of the Irish population doesn't actually know what global warming is, they just heard it all over the news. Yeah, that's the reason why it's the minister's fault. And then, actually, that's why we need this, like, the first years, to know about it. That's why we need it. We need it. We're going to have to introduce it into schools to know more about global warming. If we don't do it now, we're going to, do, we're going to have to move away from Ireland. And moving away from Ireland costs money as well. So you might as well do it and leave in Ireland. So one of the key problems that keeps coming to a party is that there's a, it seems to be a big internal conflict there. So how can you expect a, a party which can't even agree with itself? We need to listen more to the solution. Would you like to read it out for you? <laughs> I just feel to make a mind up on any issue without discussion and debate is really the wrong way to proceed with anything. And that's why I think having this discussion this morning, it doesn't matter if there are different views or that's the whole thing about life. Everybody has different views. Some of you here might become politicians in time, a council at all level, or just join a political party, or just be activists. But please don't believe that your voice doesn't count. I'm not here this morning simply the courtesy. I'm here this morning because I wanted to hear what you have to say. And I want to also be able to go back to other colleagues in the European Parliament and say, look, I was at a school in Brunswick speak to today. <coughs> we're raising this issue and that issue. And he say, yeah, I was at a school in Sweden or I was at one in Germany. It actually does have an impact. And it's by that debate and discussion that you hear things that would change your view or reinforce your view or awaken a new interest in the subject that you have got an interest in up until now. I really did find the discussion uh, very interesting and the fact that it was conducted in such a respectful manner. Even the protesters were very uh, involved <laughs> in, in the way that they go about the thing. But it really is good for me to be here and have the opportunity to hear what you say. It does energise me 
It makes my job worthwhile and gives me the opportunity to go away and reflect on what you said from acorns grow oak trees and everything that you said here today um, has some impact on me and I hope what I say has some impact on others. So thanks very much for coming.